Welcome to Yon's Friends. I'm Gary Gaither. And I'm Sue Gaither. Welcome, welcome. Well, we pray that uh, we would, uh, our words would be not our words, but the words of the Lord speaking through us. So I want to start with that as a prayer. Lord, we commit this short 29 minutes to you and ask that you would indeed express your love and your life through us to our listeners, and they would hear with your ears and respond to you, Lord, as you speak your words of life, your words of encouragement and love today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So what has God been working in your heart this week? I know we've shared a number of things, and so I just uh, really praise him that he's always working in all of our hearts and lives and and is teaching us, really teaching us Christ Jesus and the things of Christ. Well, Sue, if I could leave a legacy uh, and I were and I disappeared tomorrow, what I'd like to leave for, for the listeners and for our friends and, and family is, is a deep apprehension of the fact that Christ is our life. He doesn't give us love, he is love, and he gives us himself. He doesn't give us wisdom or information or insight. He is that dwelling within us, constantly available to us. If we will get out of the way, if we will recognize the, 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 the temptations of the devil, and his goal is to get us to forget our vital union with, with, with the Lord Jesus Christ by the indwelling power of his Holy Spirit, and get us to operate out of our own resources, supposed, and out of out of our out of our own energies and, and and thought life, when in fact, we are designed to contain and express the very presence and life of God Himself by His Spirit, even as those who are lost contain and express their indwelling Spirit, which is the adversary, the the evil one. When Jesus told the Pharisees, "You are of your father, the devil." Well, you know what? We we should close the program right now because <laughs> that's the Christian life. And what we need is we need to lean on the Lord to work the reality of what you just said and what is written in the Word of God regarding Christ, His finished work, His resurrection, His ascension, His seating, and now His indwelling we need him to work that through us in our thinking, our lives, our everything, because this is the gospel, this is salvation, and it is through one person, one person, Christ Jesus the Lord. And so I makes me think of you started the program out with a prayer and and I know last week I mentioned this, and I know we've mentioned it in other broadcasts, but I'm going to read this prayer that Paul prayed in Ephesians. Oh, please. I Yes, Lord. And think about it. It is a divine prayer. It's, so if it's in the Word of God, it's the will of God for every person that's in Christ. But I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, would give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. And I underscore that, in the knowledge of, and then I underscore like 17,000 times, him, H-I-M. Not the knowledge of methods, not the knowledge of this or that, but the knowledge of him. I pray I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened so that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the glorious riches of his inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power to us, and I would like to say in us, because that's the truth. Who believe according to, according to the working of his vast strength, his mighty strength, 
And he demonstrated this mighty strength when he raised Christ from the dead. And so these are not just Christian words we say, but this is the reality of Christ dwelling in the human heart. I was thinking this morning about the Lord and when he created the heavens and the earth, and there was no human being there and God created the heavens and earth and so remember when Job sat around with his three friends and they to me I see it as a picture debating theology and having plausible arguments about this or why this happened and why that's not happening and all the things you should have done and didn't do and ought to do and Job and his conversation. But what happened at the end of it? God asked Job to pull up a chair. And he said to Job, where were you then? And he named some of the things that he did in creation. Where were you? And so what was Job's response? He said, oh my goodness, if I can put it in terms that we might say today, oh my goodness, I have been to Bible school. I have been to many Bible studies. I have been to church for many years, but now my eyes see you. I do repent because I know nothing. I really don't know anything until I see Jesus with the eyes of my heart. And so when the Lord When God created the heavens and the earth, no one was there. Another thought, no one, no human being was in the tomb when God raised him from the dead. No one was there on the cross knowing what Jesus felt in his body with the sins of the whole world being on him. When he became sin for us. This is all the perfect reasons why every child of God, everybody needs to be humble and say, what do I know except that I need you, O God, to feed my heart with the knowledge of your Son in me. And then I need you to work it out, him out through me in all of my life. This is what salvation is. God sent his Son to save us to the uttermost spirit, soul, body, to renew our minds according to, and I just read it, that it would be according to him and the true knowledge of him. So there's thousand things and a thousand different ways sometimes we say it, but it all boils down to my heart, my heart, and every child of God, our hearts, need so much to really know our Savior and our Lord in us and what he's doing in us. And the other thought I had, and then I'll pass the baton back to you, Gary, is that John 1, it says, the word became flesh and dwelled among us. And the John wrote, beloved apostle John wrote, and we beheld his glory. And so guess what? That scripture that Paul wrote, he says, we have this treasure in an earthen vessel so that the sufficiency is not of my human flesh. My sufficiency is coming from the treasure of Christ living and dwelling in the human heart. And therefore, that makes me excited because God wants his word in me to become part of me, part of all that I am and say and express that the word of God dwells in this flesh and dwells among the people of the world that they might behold me no behold his glory in us and that is what Paul wrote in Colossians 1 27 Christ in you the hope of glory and Paul was not persecuted for being religious he was persecuted because he was saying y'all this is not religion this is so awesome this privilege that we have 
of being in Christ, in Christ in us, and relationship. And that it's going to only come through him. It's not going to come through methods and creeds and ideas of the flesh, but it's only come through the life of the Son of God in me. And this is the message of the great salvation. You know, there's a, there's a great distinction between knowing about Jesus and knowing Jesus. And, you know, throughout our, our life and, and ministry and relationships and, and all the venues we, we've been in, we, we see that so many people do not understand the difference. They, you know, they get, they're proud of all they know and all they've learned, and maybe they're proud of, of their theology, maybe they're proud of their eschatology, their knowledge of end events, or some teaching, or some, some great uh, speaker or teacher that, that they have adopted as, as you know, their source, and they're always quoting from this, you know, this person or that person. With, and they may know a lot about what that person says and believes, but they don't know the heart of Christ. And that is so evident uh, in, in so many ways. You can, you can tell because sometimes they do it in a way where they're kind of running roughshod over people. That they, they, have the, they use the scriptures, but they don't have the heart of the Lord when they do it. They, uh, they're not sensitive to, to whomever they're speaking to. It be an individual, a small group, or a, a large group. That, that, that they're so interested in their objective, in making a point, uh, or in impressing people with, with, with some thought or, or theology, that they don't notice that the Spirit is being, being grieved. And, and I have a real simple example that comes out of my early Christian walk. I was living out west, and I visited a church that I, I heard a visiting speaker that was, it was so impressive that, that I came back and, and became a part of that church. And, he, man, this guy was famous. He'd been president of a, theolo- of a, of a seminary and, and had all the credentials you can imagine. And, and he got up and he spoke a, a wonderful message. I can still remember, you know, there's not many messages. I still remember the outline and, and the emphasis. But he, he spoke on that verse in Philippians, to me, to live is Christ. And I've, I've gone back and pondered that and studied that scripture. And it, I own it now. It's part of me, those, those six monosyllable words. And it was so anointed. It struck me so deeply. Well, then a, a couple of years later, uh, he came back again to fill in an absence, and he brought the same message. Only the second time he brought it, it didn't have the life in it. it. The second time he brought it, it was sermon number 63 out of his notebook. It, it, it carried no unction. It carried none of the, the earlier oomph of, of, of the Holy Spirit's presence, of the, of the passion and clarity of the, of the Lord himself being being expressed, and it was just flat and dull. And I thought, here's the same man giving the same message, but the message was out of his head rather than out of his spirit, united with the spirit of Christ. Uh, he, he, was, he was filling in a role. He was, he was speaking as, as an interim rather than, than, than as a passionate pastor and, and conveyor of the very word and life of Christ. And I was so shocked. The same man, the same place, the same sermon, and it was flat and lifeless. And it was really a message to me. And, and over the years, I've thought about that. And I've been, in, I've been in churches like probably many of our listeners have. When you sit and hear a sermon, and it's just information. And sometimes in one of those sermons, there will be an illumination come where the Holy Spirit will ignite one one scripture or one f- phrase, one sentence, and it'll be life to me. And I'll walk out of there, and I said, that was a boring sermon, but God spoke to me, and he gave me this little snippet, this thing that, I, that God can work in my heart and can find expression in my life because that part was, as, as Jesus said in John 6, my words are spirit and they are life. Well, it reminds me of what you're saying is, how the Old Testament are all types and shadows of Christ Jesus, who Paul writes is the substance now. He's the substance in my heart. 
And one of the types in shadows is God gave manna from heaven, but it was daily. And they were not to store up manna and try to eat, you know, for the next day because God wanted to be fresh. And years ago, someone wrote a song, and I there's a line in the song, um, sharing each new day with you, Lord, is like a cup of fresh life. Ah, yes. And that's yes. who Christ is in us. When you said you want the legacy to be expressing the message that Christ is our life, well, he is that indeed. And his words, you just said it, his words are life. And that means um, the spirit in me, when he's teaching, when he's the one that's really enlightening the eyes, what did Paul write in Corinthians? He said, the letter kills, but the spirit gives life, and the ministry of the new covenant is all about life, all about the quickening of our minds, our hearts, the work of the Spirit in us, who is the work of God, working in us both to will and to do of His good pleasure. It's not of the letter. It's not about human flesh going to achieve something. It is truly God in us and the Son of God in us, which means, what does it mean? It means not only in our works and good things that we do externally, but... The renewal of the mind, the the spiritual wisdom and understanding is coming from the Lord so that this is all him. And what did Paul write to Timothy? He said, the spirit in you is not a spirit of fear, the spirit of fear, but he's love and of, of a sound mind. Yes. Can you think of anything more glorious? <laughs> well, I wanted, I wanted to say that... Um... The same thing is, is true, not just when we hear a sermon, but in our own quiet time, the same thing is true, that sometimes something will come to my, to my mind just reading the scripture or hearing something on, on the internet or even in a conversation with a friend. Something will come to mind and it carries the presence and power, the very, the very Holy Spirit and and sometimes Sue in the morning you'll get up and share something that you've been studying and it, it is such such life in it and 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 listener I, ju I just pray that you would learn to discern the difference between information and theology and religion and life that thing which carries the very life of Christ uh, and can and can be life-changing uh, for you and and I know there is a need to build an information base to build a to build a, a a platform of understanding of the scriptures and sometimes you just study just yes just to get information just to get the background just to just to know the word and that and that's great but it needs to sometimes come in as life changing anointed that what you do the prayer you open from Ephesians 3 you know that, that we would indeed you know have that have that anointing uh, given to us to to understand deeply what God has for us but see I think that's where we need to also underscore relationship and fellowship with the Lord because that's who we're talking to we're talking to the risen Lord, risen, living Savior, and so I am, and so is every child of God in relationship and fellowship with the Father and with the Son, and it's through doctrine, through theology that I come to know the facts, the facts that because of his blood and his cross that I have peace with God, I've been made just I'm justified through him. Well, that's the facts. But now, through relationship and fellowship with the Lord, I, I bring that fact to him and I say, I say, oh, dear Lord, my Savior, my, my precious brother, thank you 
that because of your cross and your your wonderful work on the cross, your blood, I'm a child of God. Now that's fellowship. That's relationship. That's a living prayer. It's just not sitting there reading the Bible and reading the facts and then go off the day and do something else. No, this is a life relationship with the living, resurrected Son of God all throughout the day, all throughout my life, and a real trust in Him that there are the areas of my life that I do not see the fruit or whatever in my life that I come to understand by the power of the Holy Spirit in me. It's all going to come through Christ. It's all going to come through grace. It's all going to come through the work of the Spirit, the ministry of the Spirit in me, Christ in me, the hope of glory, and not anything that flesh is striving externally to do to bring it about. It's a life of faith, grace through faith. And I am so big on that because not only is it in the Scripture, it is the truth. It is what Paul preached. But I look back on my own personal life, Gary. I know where I've been. I know my struggles. I know me. And now I look and I say, as I did this morning, I just rehearsed with God the work that I see in my heart, what he's done in my mind, in my thinking, in my heart. And see, the result of God's work in us is joy and peace, just the, the work of righteousness by God in us is peace, that there's rest, and that is his goal. That's his goal, to settle the heart, to settle the mind, and to really know Christ Jesus the Lord, and to trust him for the works that he does want us to do throughout our life, and, and that abiding, that that, that it's not a buzzword, we say, but it's a reality of the heart, which I just, I'm rejoicing because I think about another type in shadow is think about Joshua and Caleb. Now, they were the only ones, Gary, left out of yes. their generation yes. that entered the land. But did they still go through the wilderness? Yes, they did. But was the compass of their heart set right and the answer was yes they had faith they believed god they were headed in the right direction so when paul he gives us the compass and it's philippians 3 that i may know him and the power of his resurrection if you want a compass for your life for your heart take that as your compass Ask God to fix it in you, and that despite the struggles or not a lack of knowledge, a lack of understanding, God will get you there, because that is his will. You know, the Lord said to his disciples, he says, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And he said, I and the Father are one. Now, that simply means that they, that they were in such vital union with one another that that he was expressing the words of the Father and the life of the Father. Earlier in John 5, he said, I only say what I hear from the Father, I only do what I see the Father doing. And then at the end of that, at the end of the Last Supper discourse in John 17, he said, as the Father has sent me, so I'm sending you. And then he prayed for all his, prayed in the, in the high priestly prayer, John 17, he prayed for himself, he prayed for his disciples, and he prayed for us. He prayed for all those future believers who would believe through the word of the disciples. So he was praying and speaking to us as well. And in post-resurrection, when he appeared to his disciples in his glorified body, he repeated the same phrase a couple chapters later. He said, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. So, so listener, we take Jesus as our prototype. And if he said, uh, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father, we should ultimately be able to say, if, if you've seen me, Gary and Sue, you've seen Jesus. Not perfectly. Um, well, I like that, and I think that's the essence of 
of what we're saying um, throughout all of God's friends is really pointing to the Savior, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ is life. Christ is everything. And I do would like to close out with a song um, that I think is very fitting to speak of what we've been saying, but also to, to speak of Christ affectionately. Mm. He really is our Savior and our Lord. And we just want you to join us again next week as we continue to share Christ in you, the hope of glory. And by the way, you can reach us at Gary and Sue Gaither at gmail.com or, or on, on YouTube, Gary and Sue Gaither, and you'll find us. All right, so we'll see you next week, and God bless you. God bless your week as you walk with Him. Redeemer, what did you see to leave your throne and die? My redeemer